what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys, and this time we're going to be talking about the newest wave that was revealed during the MCM Comic Con from Hasbro. This is the Transformers Studio Series Wave 1 of 2024. Now, we did also know about the Starscream from the War for Zabatron game and the Junk Keep, but one, they didn't really provide stock images, and two, we've already known about that, so we're going to focus on the brand new stuff, starting with the concept version of the Bumblebee movie, Rumble. So they're going to take some concept designs from either the CAD files or something that was sketched up, and they're going to make toys based on that. This helps expand some of the Studio Series figures, and not only that, it just... It gives us more in the movie line in general, and it kind of reminds me of the early movie lines where in the first movie and the second movie mostly, they just gave us random characters. Like, I think Ransack, I think Landmine, I think a, like a whole bunch of other characters. And so this feels very nostalgic to me. I'm very happy with that. Uh, we're going to start off with Rumble, and obviously he transforms into... Okay, maybe it's not that obvious. <laughs> It's just a, a blob, basically, and basically the idea of this is to do what Soundwave did with the Ravage. So it will transform into this rectangular thing, you'll be able to pop it in the chest, and I've already got Ravage inside of there. So you'll be able to put them in and pop them out, and I thought that was a clever touch. Now, I like the abundance of this blue color. It's a lot, maybe a little too much for something that's from the movies, but... I like that you see that bold color. I, I want to see that in the chest and how that looks. But anyways, so we've got that. And then taking a look at the robot form. So he has the pile drivers. He doesn't have proper arms. The arms don't even rotate, so you can't use that joint in the middle as like an elbow. So some people don't like that. Some people are disappointed by that. Honestly, I'm not really that disappointed. I kind of like that the entire point of this character is just to make earthquakes and that's his function that is what he's made to do but the confusing part is the guns on the back it looks like weapons that will be able to pop off and i'm curious to see if they'll be able to be used in some form with this figure other than just plugging onto the back maybe they'll plug on the side of the the you know the pile drivers or, or whatever maybe they'll combine with soundwaves guns i guess we'll have to wait and see or maybe it's just a reference to the original rumble uh, but one weird thing is that the head looks like one of the Combaticons. It looks like Bruticus or one of his little guys. And I'm starting to see that it mostly reminds me of the Eject and Rewind. So I'm curious to see if they'll eventually do like a blaster thing if they expand far enough. But I don't mind the chest. It's a little clean, much more cleaner than I expected. But I, I like, again, that bold color. I like the light blue on the top there. I think the gray is very pleasant to go with it. And I'm curious to see what they'll do with the Frenzy. Because we've got a listing for Frenzy. So I imagine we're going to see this in black and red. Maybe it's going to be mostly black. And then the light blue is going to be replaced with red. We'll just have to wait and see. But that's pretty cool. And hopefully we get Autobot versions. Because I would like that. Anyways, moving on to this. This is a Last Night figure. Which we don't get too often. But I'm fine with that. This is Mohawk. Now, Mohawk never got a toy for the last night. He didn't even get a, a simple something changer or whatever. He just never existed as a toy, so this is going to be the first time. And the bike mode is a little clunky, but for a core class figure, I don't necessarily mind. I, I could just look past all the crap that's just placed on it. If it's got two wheels, if you can see the headlights and you see the handlebars, if it's got a seat, then fine, it's a motorbike. They're not always the best, but it's okay for what it is. And then take a look at the robot mode. I think my only complaint about the robot mode is two things. One, it's a lot of gray. Yes, you got a lot of green paint on the chest, the head, and then on the shoulder as well as the hand, which I thought was pretty cool. But you don't get any black details within the body. I think because it's a core class, if you have it in hand, it might look better, but at least something on the Mohawk would be nice. The other thing that I'll complain about is the fact that the wheels are in the wrong position. If there was another joint for those, I guess they would lay properly on the shoulders, but otherwise, I don't mind this. I, I think he's a, a cool, kind of creepy looking character. And, uh, you know, it's a new figure for the last night. It's a Decepticon, which I feel like that line desperately needed. And I even like the little knife that he's got. So he's, he could go and just jab, jab, jab. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm totally fine with this. I know it's not for everyone, but, yeah, I, I could go for it. 
Anyways, moving on, we also have Scorfinog. Now, some people are upset that this isn't with the dark red accents, instead it's with the purple. And I kind of agree with that. I think someone told me that he's actually purple in some of the early scenes, like some of the Scorpnox are purple, but I just remember them being red in the movie. Maybe I'm misremembering that, but either way, the purple is closer to that Beast Wars appearance, so just to have that hue in there, I don't mind. And I think the shape is pretty cool. Yeah, you can definitely see that the back legs are going to be the robot legs, but everything else seems to be fine. I love the head sculpt. I like those little turbines in the claw, then the claws themselves look very nice. I imagine they're going to have some form of articulation. And uh, yeah, I, I think they did, you know, pretty okay. Could use more paint to pick out some of the details, but there's a lot going on that I feel it's fine. And then taking a look at the robot mode, I'm not sure how I feel about it. The body just looks too thin and slim and then the arms are kind of weird the legs are the legs and waist just feel normal for a transformer so everything else looks spindly which might have been the intention but i don't know i just i don't know if i'm really feeling it I, it, it feels incomplete i don't know if that makes any sense but yeah just something's really off about this toy and also, I don't like the fact that the tail forms the weapon. I guess it's fine because it's a big piece that would just be slapped on the back, but I'm so tired of tail weapons that it's just another one in the mix. I do like that little claw at the back, or at the tip there, so that's cool. Uh, I also like the claws being formed as the shoulders. I think that's nice. And I might be mistaken, but is that still the scorpion head used as the robot head, or is it something slightly different? I don't know. Uh, the details or just the position just makes it look different. Uh, it kind of reminds me of what they did for the first movie, Scorpnock, where he just kind of stood up and reused the head. So, Anyways, next up we've got Pablo, or Wheeljack. Now, I gotta say the alt mode is much better here. I like that line detail on the side that splits the brown from the white color on top. I like the transparent smoke windows. Yes, you can see the head inside, but I like the color in particular. And the details on the front with the Volkswagen logo is fantastic. The gun just plugs on top, which is kind of lame, but whatever. Uh, just overall, I think this is a nice chunky alt mode, but then you take a look at the robot mode, and something's definitely off. I will say for the mainline figure of Wheeljack that we got a while ago, that the chest is designed much better because there was a nice separation with a lot of the details. This you can see the abdomen is almost completely black and then the sides here are brown. There's no real separation between everything. It's just, it, it feels like it's plastered with paint. So yeah, or at least it's not as separated as the original uh, mainline toy. You also have the panels on the side of the arms that stick out way further. And then the doors just stick on the back, which might be good for those who kind of want that for the, the G1 look to have some wings going on, but he didn't really have that as far as I know, so yeah. My biggest complaint is the fact that he has that pistol rifle weapon. I don't remember him using that at all in the film. This was the opportunity to get those cannons, and they just decided not to include it. I think that's uh, something that's completely missed here, but I think the legs are designed fine. I do like the head. I think the colors are fine, and I might get this anyways. Most of my figures are going to be the Studio Series line, so I don't know. I, I will say I do agree. I, I do understand why some people will go for the mainline one, but for me, I I'm probably still going to stick with Studio Series. Then last but not least, same with Rumble, this is part of that concept line. And this was a design that's been going around for a while. A lot of people knew about it with the silhouette and some other things. It was actually designed, or it was actually shown with the artwork design on a Megatron repaint for the Rise of the Beast line, but this is going to be the Bumblebee movie version of the concept of Megatron. So this is him transforming into a tank, and I will say that there's so much going on that the tank barrel just looks too clean for it, but that's not really a complaint, that's just kind of a, I wouldn't even say a nitpick, just something I noticed, but it looks savage, it looks bulky, it looks just kind of terrifying and, and and i think that works for megatron i also like the different tones of silver and gunmetal that's used i i think it's fantastic i like the the tread pods at the front there yeah this is very nice he also will be able to transform into this flying jet which kind of reminds me of what they did for revenge of the fallen where this tank form can fly around so i think he transforms upside down then you have the cockpit then the wings fold out and you do a couple of other things to change its position but uh 
Yeah, I, I like the idea that it will also have a jet form. I, I think that works for Megatron. Uh, there was no singular stock image for that, but we do have Megatron in his robot mode, and this is something else. Now, they did show more of the behind the scenes of Megatron, and I don't think he's going to be that much taller compared to Optimus Prime, but I don't want him to be that much taller than Optimus Prime. A little bit or just the same height, I'm totally fine with. You know, Megatron can look overpowering as long as Optimus Prime can still take him, and I think that's fine here. I also love the fact that he does come with the fusion cannon. That looks pretty cool. The waist looks wicked with these panels that tuck inside. I know that's weird to mention the crotch plate, but I think that's kind of cool. And then I also like the flat design on the chest, just to cue that G1 look. I think the head sculpt looks fantastic. It's very evil looking. We did see a prototype in different colors, and some people weren't on board with it, but I think seeing it in this, yeah, I can definitely see what they're going for. And some people have said that he might be able to open his hands, and I think that'd be kind of nice. I also like the paint details on the abdomen, or, or the, uh, the the waist, uh, with the little dots picked out, and then the accents of red. Uh, yeah, this is a fantastic looking Megatron. So, with that out of the way, what do you guys think? Please comment below, let me know. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun doodads. And we'll see you guys next time. All Spark TV. Now that's just Prime.